Rancho Palos Verdes, founded 40 years ago, is the peninsula's youngest city. It is paradise, as I keep saying. You know, it's, we live in paradise. What's not to love in RPV? You know, you have uh, uh, the coastline, the beaches, the trails, the preserve, the school system, the neighborhoods, the people. RPV's story is exciting. Long ago, Tongva Indians, Spanish explorers, cattle ranchers, and farmers lived off the land. A promised land sought out by New York investor Frank Vanderlip. Vanderlip bought the entire peninsula, sight unseen, a hundred years ago. And he came out here in a private railroad car with his family to, to see it. And they basically took a, a car and they came over the top of the hill. And there was nothing out here. And it was just absolutely beautiful. By 1957, there were three peninsula cities when a peninsula-wide movement began to form a fourth. Residents feared massive development in the unincorporated area controlled by L.A. County, and they wanted local control. We had to raise the consciousness of a lot of people. My role was to um, get the news into the newspapers uh, as frequently as we possibly could so that we could uh, let everybody know what was happening at the county level. The League of Women Voters, the PV Peninsula Advisory Council, and the group Save Our Coastline joined forces. Rolling Hills Mayor Fred Hess, activist Dorothy LeConte, and Gordon Curtis led the 10-year battle with the county. People were very determined. Everybody, Barbara and Betty, talk about the excitement. I really think about the determination of everybody. A state Supreme Court ruling finally paved the way for a cityhood election, and on September 7, 1973, RPV officially incorporated and the first city council was sworn in. They elected five of us on a city council. Myself, Marilyn Ryan, Bob Ryan, no relation, uh, Gunther Burke, and Dave Sisko Ruth. I think the biggest challenge for the first city council was keeping faith with the electorate. It, over 80% of the community voted in favor of incorporation. This is unheard of for a uh, new city. In our general plan, we have a low density city, and I think that is the key to keeping the founder's dream alive. And we have abundance of open space. We have beautiful views, we have open space. I very, very much rely on the relationships that I've got with some of the original founders to help me steer uh, uh, what we do today on the council. Preserving the founder's dream continues, a landscape protected for generations to come. The celebration of, of preserving equality of life. Uh, and I think that's something that many people, many communities are fighting to struggle to hold on to. Uh, we have such a strong sense of community in my neighborhood and I think throughout the city. I'm really honored and we are really blessed to be here in Rancho Palos Verdes. First of all, happy birthday Rancho Palos Verdes. 40 wonderful years of cityhood. Who knows what would have happened had it stayed in the county. We talked about the good old days prior to cityhood when we talked about Ascot Raceway by the sea and the Gila port there oh. just in and out from the, you know how difficult traffic is down there. If you had helicopters in and out of there all the time, instead you're going to have to put up with Terranea, one of the best resorts in Southern California, one of the best romantic getaways. Hawthorne Boulevard, double decked. Can you imagine that? Double decked with off ramps into Los Verdes Golf Course, Hess Park. I mean, it was amazing. Instead, you have all this open space, you have this beautiful city, you know, long council meetings. You've had some wacky meetings down there, but at the, all the time having a good time. At the end of the day, everybody seems to come together and want a beautiful city. So 40 years of celebration. Wish I could be there with you to blow out the candles, watch Susan Brooks give a speech. I'll tell you what, what a night. I'm on my way to Washington, D.C. And you know what's in Washington, D.C. We go back there, we kiss the rings, we hug them, we beg, and nothing happens. You guys are always asking for money. It always, I always come to Rancho Palos Verdes with my hands in my pockets. Have a great evening, a fun time. Happy 40th anniversary, Rancho Palos Verdes. Rancho Palos Verdes, founded 40 years ago, is the peninsula's youngest city. It is paradise, as I keep saying. You know, it's, we live in paradise. What's not to love in RPV? You know, you have uh, uh, 
Uh, the coastline, the beaches, the trails, the preserve, the school system, the neighborhoods, the people. RPV's story is exciting. Long ago, Tongva Indians, Spanish explorers, cattle ranchers and farmers lived off the land. A promised land sought out by New York investor Frank Vanderlip. Vanderlip bought the entire peninsula, sight unseen, a hundred years ago. And he came out here in a private railroad car with his family to, to see it. And they basically took a, a car and they came over the top of the hill. And there was nothing out here. And it was just absolutely beautiful. By 1957, there were three peninsula cities when a peninsula-wide movement began to form a fourth. Residents feared massive development in the unincorporated area controlled by L.A. County, and they wanted local control. We had to raise the consciousness of a lot of people. My role was to um, get the news into the newspapers uh, as frequently as we possibly could so that we could uh, let everybody know what was happening at the county level. The League of Women Voters, the PV Peninsula Advisory Council, and the group Save Our Coastline joined forces. Rolling Hills Mayor Fred Hess, activist Dorothy LeConte, and Gordon Curtis led the 10-year battle with the county. People were very determined. Everybody, Barbara and Betty, talk about the excitement. I really think about the determination of everybody. A state Supreme Court ruling finally paved the way for a cityhood election. And on September 7, 1973, RPV officially incorporated and the first city council was sworn in. They elected five of us on a city council. Myself, Marilyn Ryan, Bob Ryan, no relation, uh, Gunther Burke, and Dave Sisko Ruth. I think the biggest challenge for the first city council was keeping faith with the electorate. It, over 80% of the community voted in favor of incorporation. This is unheard of for a uh, new city. In our general plan, we have a low density city, and I think that is the key to keeping the founder's dream alive. And we have abundance of open space. We have beautiful views, we have open space. I very, very much rely on the relationships that I've got with some of the original founders to help me steer uh, uh, what we do today on the council. Preserving the founder's dream continues, a landscape protected for generations to come. The celebration of, of preserving equality of life. Uh, and I think that's something that many people, many communities are fighting to struggle to hold on to. Uh, we have such a strong sense of community in my neighborhood and I think throughout the city. I'm really honored and we are really blessed to be here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Rancho Palos Verdes is a jewel on the coastline, a city that garners breathtaking views, miles of open space, and landmarks that attract the world. One of the most recognizable landmarks is the Point Vicente Lighthouse, which stands tall along the bluffs and is a true symbol of the peninsula. The lighthouse was built in 1926 and is operated by the Coast Guard and is on the National Registry of Historic Places. Next to the lighthouse is the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. People come from near and far to watch the migration of the gray whale. I have been a docent for 20 years, so I've seen lots of changes, and it is definitely the most wonderful place on the peninsula. Just across the shore from the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center sits the Terranea Resort, which reflects the beauty and history of the land in Rancho Palos Verdes. There were many, many architectural drawings and we really looked at how the land kind of cascaded down. We feel privileged to be on this site in this land and we're part of a broader community. Everyone's welcome and they can walk the pathways and feel like this is really their property. And before the spectacular property was Terranea, it was another treasure in the community called Marine Land. We were actually startled at how many people were involved with Marine Land over the years. I'm so grateful that I get to come here every day and serve um, this beautiful community and our guests. Not far from Terranea and nestled in nature is the world famous Wayfarers Chapel built in 1951 by architect Lloyd Wright. The Wayfarers Chapel is a Swedenborgian chapel 
and people come from all over the world to get married here and marvel at the unique architecture. Across the road from the Wayfarers Chapel is Abalone Cove Shoreline Park. It's one of nearly 20 parks run by the city. Abalone Cove, or Ab Cove, has two beaches, tide pools, hiking trails, and picnic areas along the bluffs. No matter what park you visit in RPV, you will find beautiful nature surrounding you. And just down the road at Trump National Golf Course is Founders Park and Marilyn Ryan Sunset Park, which have spectacular views. And speaking of spectacular views, you won't find a golf course anywhere that's as stunning as the views from Trump National Golf Club. Every single hole is either on the ocean or a view of the ocean, and there's no course like that in California. The city has been really spectacular. I mean, they want this to be the best. They're very proud of it, and we appreciate that, and we've really had a great relationship with them. The Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy has enjoyed a long-time collaboration with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, working together to preserve this wonderful open space, which is the 1,400-acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. This is such a community treasure and landmark. It has amazing trails running through it with great habitat, wonderful scenic vistas, and lovely wildlife. No matter where you are in Rancho Palos Verdes, the landscape shines brightly. There are cultural and architectural wonders to see, businesses, schools and institutions to enjoy, and a treasure-filled community to celebrate. We congratulate um, the city on their 40-year anniversary. We're very happy to be part of their celebration.